Bear down, Chicago Bears fans. We've got an update from Matt Eberflus himself in which he really illustrates that they believe that they are going to take a pass rusher at that number nine selection. The available people, Dallas Turner, Jared Verse, Luatu Latu. There are a couple of edge rushers that are available at that position. So now the question is, are we going to have four draft picks? Will we talk about trading back to number 75? <clears throat> Will there be, like we discussed before, a move for Khalil Herbert going to the Cowboys potentially for an earlier draft pick so that the Bears have five draft picks or six draft picks for this upcoming draft? Or is this just where we are? And in fact, if this is where we are, I made a draft today, which I think actually played out pretty well. I didn't make any trades. I didn't make any changes to it. At the number one, I took the number nine. I took the number 75. I took the number 122. I took the best player available for the position of need that we have, or at least presumed positions of need that we have. And it went pretty well. So, uh, you know, um, we got Lord Crimson in the house. Greetings and go Bears. Uh, I think that we've got a, a really good... Um, we got a really good show. It's going to be a little bit abbreviated today because I got to get go. Um, I got to get um, I got to get out of here uh, early. So let's kick this off as quickly as we possibly can. Let's get it through. Uh, first up, did Matt Eberflus confirm the Chicago Bears will draft the pass rusher? Now that's the big question of the day. And uh, what he said is he wanted to create a one-two punch. And this was uh, last week. By the way, this is not a long time ago. This is just last week. He says, you look at who affects the quarterback the most. We're looking at all pass rushers. It can be inside, outside, all along the line. We're having an open mind in that regard. So, you know, what could you be looking at in that context? Well, you'd be looking at Dallas Turner, Jared Verse, Luatu Latu, or maybe Johnny Newton, which is the number one defensive tackle coming out of Illinois. So um, that's the positions and that's the spots that he's looking for. So he continued his comments about adding to the defensive line by describing two players the Chicago Bears already have. He talked about the second-year jump that guys like Gervon Dexter and Zach Pickens can have this year. Uh, those players are about to go through what Eberflus describes as the biggest jump rookies tip typically have from the second half of their rookie season to their second year in the NFL. Players go through the greatest growth because they're starting to really understand the rhythm and flow of that professional level. Although Dexter Jr., uh, Sr., and Pickens had decent rookie years, with three sacks combined, are the Bears satisfied at the position? Eberflus said they're looking at all positions on the defensive line and they have an open mind. So if Dallas Turner or Jared Verse fall to the ninth spot, how do the Bears pass them up? It would take several puzzle pieces falling into exactly the right spots for this to happen. Now, I don't think that's the, the, the case anymore. I think it's pretty much uh, almost sold that uh, Dallas Turner or Jared Verse can be available at the nine slot. So the Minnesota Vikings would have to trade up to the Arizona Cardinals to select a quarterback. So uh, there are quarterbacks that are going to be still out there. And then, of course, there's Joe Alt, who's also on the draft board, Malik Neighbors, Roma Dunsey. How do you fit uh, out of eight selections? And it is possible that you're looking at Caleb Williams, Drake May, Jaden Daniels, Joe, uh, J.J. McCarthy as the top four. Then you're looking at Malik Neighbors uh, and, and um, Marvin Harrison as uh, five and six. And then Joe Alt is number seven. And then that's where it gets kind of interesting. So the, I don't think there's any way that these guys are not going to be available. Or at least one of them is going to be available. Plus, we haven't even gotten into Brock Bowers. Um, you know, there, there's uh, Olu Fashanu. So there are plenty of really talented players that are available in this draft early on. The Bears are going to take two of them. So... Um, now, uh, for the purpose of the article, it does say that it's hard to imagine General uh, General Manager Ryan Poles keeping the Bears at the ninth spot with less draft capital than he's used to having to go in the NFL draft. He will likely trade down and acquire more picks. But if he doesn't and one of those pass rushers is available, it's hard to imagine Matt Eberflus letting Poles pass them up. After all, defense wins championships, right? And that's what uh, that's what we're talking about. And yes, uh, Trevon Diggs just went to uh, the Texans, and we're actually going to talk about that in just a few minutes because people are absolutely going ballistic. Bears fans all over Twitter are having themselves quite the time right now over that. Uh, and let me know what you think. Do you think that was a Stephon Diggs going to uh, the Texans uh, as a second year option? Uh, by the way, there was a comparison that was made, and which is what I'm going to go over in just a little while with it. Uh, when we talk about this guy right here, Justin Fields. So the NFL, uh, an NFL executive speaking on a condition of anonymity, uh, meaning that he's full of shit, in my opinion, uh, says that uh, the, the Bears 
got bullied and gave up with the Justin Fields trade to the Steelers. Um, speaking to Mike Sando of The Athletic, an anonymous NFL executive said the, uh, said the following about the controversial deal. They almost got bullied or gave up. Their asking price was probably too high initially, and then when they realized the seats got filled, they had to lower their ask. I don't understand why you would make that trade, because if somebody has an injury or doesn't get the quarterback they thought they were going to get, the ask will be higher. Now, I pretty much think that at this point, uh, it means that they just they gave Justin Fields what he wants, because they realized that they had probably uh, done him poorly and, and no service uh, when they had drafted him. So... Uh, it, it turned out that, that that was the one place that he wanted to go. Uh, and it was for a 2025 conditional six-round pick that can be a fourth-round pick if Justin Fields plays at least 51% of the snap. So this is not a great deal for them, but it was a good deal for Justin Fields to get on the team that he wanted to go to. But, you know, I I, I don't think that they got bullied or even gave up. I think the... Uh, I think they, quote unquote, felt they were doing right by Justin, which was something that they were saying a long time ago. So I think that that's I mean, I think that that's what happens now. Moving on here, uh, Bears top 30 visit tracker shows that Rome Adunzi is set to visit Chicago in the next couple of days. Um, so uh, that's going to be a pretty big um, uh, that's going to be a pretty big play here. Uh, now that begs the question, of course, at the number nine selection, can you get another, you know, you, you can't really get into this. So um, at the number nine, here's where we get a little differential from what Matt Eberflus is saying. Um, uh, the Bears have just four total draft picks with two selections in the first round, one and nine, uh, number 75 and 122. So uh, the list of every reported top 30 visits for the Bears are Caleb Williams, um, Roma Dunsey. Xavier Worthy, Brock Bowers, uh, Kieran Amagaji, uh, that's the guy from Yale. Remember, he's a, he's a later round pick. Uh, Dallas Turner, uh, Nehemiah Pritchett, cornerback out of Auburn, uh, Elijah Jones from Boston South College, quarterback Jaquan Jackson, wide receiver out of Tulane, uh, Cam Hart, cornerback out of Notre Dame, uh, Dylan Lobb, running back from New Hampshire, uh, do, 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 do. those are the, uh, and then there's another one. Uh, no, nope. here we go. Now that's it. So those are the people that have visited the bears so far or that the bears have visited. So we'll see how this plays out. Not surely. I'm not, not really entirely sure how this team, um, navigates this draft. This is going to be a complicated draft. And I, and I do want to say like, you know, I've been, vocal about I, I don't think that the 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 move at quarterback was the uh the the best move it was the financial look for the team it was definitely the financially the best move for the heart of Chicago probably not but that's okay you know I mean you, you, once you move on you you move on um but that does leave us with only four draft picks so now you have to where is it that you have to make the concession well you're not going to make the concession at the number one pick. You're going to take Caleb Williams with the number one overall pick. We know that now. So what's the question at number nine? The question at number nine is, do you take that defensive guy? Or can you some way move down just a few spots while still being able uh, to, to get one of those guys like Dallas Turner or Jared Verse? And then the question is, are you even interested in Jared Verse? I think that I, it, it is my opinion, because Ryan Pohl said it about two months ago, that if Dallas Turner was available at the nine position, he was taking him. At least that's the way that it felt at that time. So, and that, that was at the point that we were all talking about, uh, you know, Justin Fields was going to stay, and then we were going to take Marvin Harrison, and at the number nine position, uh, we were probably going to take another receiver that we were going to build it, not with Keenan Allen, but it was going to be Marvin Harrison, maybe Roma Dunsey something like that, or we were looking at a way to get Joe Alt and Marvin Harrison, or we were looking at a way to get Olu Fashanu and Marvin Harrison. Nonetheless, it was around Marvin Harrison as that next wide receiver, and you know that has suddenly changed, and Ryan Poles reached out and did say that Dallas Turner was the guy that he would take if that were, were, were to come up. So... We'll see how they we'll see how they navigate this, but um, I'm, I'm certainly going to be interested to see you know what the 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 move is. Now let's check out X. I'm going to try to move this fast, guys, because I do have uh, I do have somewhere to be. Uh, I'll be gone for a couple of days, 
So uh, I'll be broadcasting remotely every day, but uh, I, I still will be gone uh, out of town for the next few days. So uh, I did want to get update because X go and give it to you. Um, and, and first up, we have uh, it's been confirmed that Michigan o o offensive guard Trevor Keegan has visited the Bears. This is another one who's shown up. Uh, Chicagoland native is six foot five, 310 pounds, and was a three year starting guard for Michigan. Projected fourth rounder. Bears could land the hometown kid in the fourth for good depth. So we got Trevor Keegan sitting out here, maybe at that, uh, the fourth is going to be the 122nd pick. So maybe, just maybe. And by the way, in my fourth round pick, I think I took Brandon Coleman. So I guess now we'll be looking at Trevor Keegan uh, a little bit more. And I mean, the guy won a national title. So, you know, perhaps that's, uh, that's one of the guys. Also, in the news, the Chicago Bears are looking at three positions with the number nine pick, offensive tackle, wide receiver, and defensive end. If you remember yesterday, our conversation, they were breaking into teams to decide which is the best one and what position would you take with the number nine pick is the question here. Uh, and with that, I would take defensive end. Uh, wide receiver is widely thought of to be the, the number one. <clears throat> Off of 315 votes, not a lot of votes, but still. Uh some voting and wide receiver is by far the the number one, and then you have defensive tackle uh, at number two, and then offensive tackle at number three. Uh, but these are the uh, uh, these are the reasons, by the way. Offensive tackle is the best team multiplier because it's the quarterback protector. And then the wide receiver is the best talent in the draft class, and depth is needed. And then the defensive end is the biggest team need, um, and it would be a defensive multiplier. Uh, uh, preventing some of the double teaming that you're going to experience on Montez Sweat uh, as he tries to break out. And, you know, if you get a double team and, Dar and Demarcus Walker is never a threat, are you even a threat to 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 sack? You know what I mean? So um, there's some there's some questions that they're going to have to ask. And I do think that when we get closer to this time, I think after it's all been said and done, I think Ryan Poles probably makes the decision to go for a defensive end. But that's speculation at best. Uh, also. Uh, if you didn't watch it yesterday, Cole Komet, DJ Moore, Tevin Jenkins. Is Tevin Jenkins a monster of a man? He's right back here. Uh, is Tevin Jenkins just a monster of a man or what? Good Lord. Uh, and Shatiri Carter, uh, they all attended the Cubs home opener on Monday, uh, hanging out. So uh, shout out to those guys for uh, supporting the hometown teams. Um, they were not much of a threat versus good teams. Uh, need upgrades all over. Yeah, of course they need upgrades all over. Like I, I really don't. I, I, I really don't. I, I think the Bears kind of pigeonhole themselves into a position where they're kind of forced to. Uh, they're going to be forced to consider this is the team that we got. This is what we're going to have to go with. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I think we added depth, but I don't think this was the time for depth. I think this was the time to continue building. But again, I've already made my opinion known. Uh, I would have passed on Caleb Williams. I would have drafted down. I would have taken a bunch of draft picks. And then I would have looked for a quarterback the next year after one more year of Justin Fields, just in case it didn't work out. But, I mean, they 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 ran out of runway is what they said. And the opportunity to take Caleb Williams was too enticing to pass up. I disagree, but that's okay. I, I'm going to support Caleb Williams. And, and I hope that he becomes the best quarterback the, the Chicago Bears have ever seen. You know what I mean? Um, I, I just don't understand some of it because this is not a deep roster. Uh, this has got some talent on the roster. Cole Komet, sure. Uh, DJ Moore, sure. Tevin Jenkins, sure. Um, but you know, there's a there's a lot of holes still in this team that have got to be plugged in and 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 better. Now the defensive secondary, defensive secondary was um, I think much improved. Uh, Tyreek Stevenson, probably going to have that same second year bump that Gravon Dexter and Zach Pickens are expected to have uh, because now they understand the game. So, you know, I think the defensive secondary is going to be a lot better. And I think that the uh, the Sam, Mike and Will, uh, Jack Sanborn, Tremaine Edmonds and TJ Edwards probably working another year together are going to be better and much improved because of that defensive line still going to be Demarcus Walker. So we're not going to get pass rush on that side of the ball uh, unless it comes. Somehow from Andrew Billings, I mean, if it comes from Andrew Billings blowing up in the defensive tackle position, sure, fine. But we just don't have that edge rusher right now. So, you know what I mean? Um, we'll see how this whole whole thing plays out. Uh, and then also, this is what we were talking about a little bit earlier. Um, Stefan Diggs is now going to the text in exchange for a 2025 second round pick. And 
this is kind of uh, uh, th this is in the second year for the uh, in, in the second year for Justin Fields. Uh, Chicago traded for Chase Claypool. In the second year of C.J. Stroud, uh, the Texans traded for Stefan Diggs. Uh, we are not built the same. So um, now Chase Claypool, by the way, is now a wide receiver for the Saskatoon Rough Riders in the Canadian Football League. That this is just, you know, this is a testament to, you know, we took a chance, by the way. We, we took a chance on Chase Claypool. Didn't work out. This guy's got some, he's got some, head, he's got I mean, head case issues, right? Uh, he, he, he can't get out of his own way. So, you know, I, I mean, you know, maybe, um, I don't know, you know, maybe, uh, this thing is, uh, maybe this is, a, maybe this is an example of what not to do, uh, when we're talking about Chase Claypool, but you know, I, I don't think that, I don't think it was that bad. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I don't think that, um, uh, I think we took a shot on Chase Claypool. It didn't work out. Um, and, and you know, Diggs, he's a route runner. He's one of those guys that just, he makes all the moves. He makes all the plays. So, um, I, I, and by the way, down here at the bottom, if you didn't notice, I've added uh, Jaquan Brisker and uh, I put uh, Gravon Dexter over there in the corner as well. So uh, we, got, uh, we got, we got a bunch of bears kind of down here. Uh, filling up this page here, bearish is going to get a little bit smaller as we go, and uh, we're going to be adding more bears as I get the time and as we get pictures of these guys. You know, I want to see Ryan Bates in a Bears jersey. Uh, I want to see uh, Col you know Coleman Shelton. I want to fill this whole thing out with all these players, but I want to get them done the right way with the right teams, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So looking for DeAndre Swift uh, in a Bears outfit, you know, all that kind of stuff. So um, anyway, so that moves us to uh, the next page or the next piece anyway. Uh, and that is the mock draft. No changes here on the line. I don't think that we have any kind of, you know, we're not, um, uh, we're not in a position to make any changes here at this point yet. Uh, Gervon Dexter still fills out that spot and Demarcus Walker still fills out the edge rusher for the moment until we get to the draft. So uh, these are the guys that we're looking at on the offense. Nothing's changed. Ryan Bates, we did make that move. Uh, he's now the starting center for the moment until we get clarity. Uh, Braxton Jones as well. Uh, probably no changes until we get to the draft. We do see a lot of flurries of activity that have been happening over the last couple of days. So it is possible that the Bears make a move as we get closer to the draft where we pick up either a draft pick or something uh, along those lines. Uh, we still need to figure out something for Tyler Scott. Or does Tyler Scott take that big leap and come up uh, and have his second year breakout, and does he improve? Uh, or do, it, it, does his improvement just kind of coincide with the fact that Caleb Williams, a better passer? You know, maybe that's maybe that ends up happening. Maybe he's, uh, uh, you know, Justin Fields was run first, Caleb Williams is passed first. Uh, maybe that right there is the impetus for Tyler Scott to improve. So, you know, this could be that we've got a, a, a much more robust roster than we think. We just haven't seen it out there playing yet. So, for my draft for the day, uh, number one, I still took Caleb Williams as the number one guy. And then at number nine, Dallas Turner was available. So I took Dallas Turner, uh, edge rusher out of Alabama. At number 75, we still need a wide receiver. So I did take Roman Wilson out of uh, Michigan. Uh, you know, for all accounts, Roman Wilson's still an elite route runner uh, and a good potential uh, slot guy to have on the team. Um and Brandon Coleman, offensive guard out of TCU. Had I known that we were doing this thing with, uh, I think it was Tegan Jackson. Uh, if I if I'd known that we were doing that uh, with with the Michigan guy, then I would have taken him in that position, uh, but did not. And Fields ran based on lack of pass protection. Okay, um, and, and that's fair to say. Like I I I, I do agree with you. Uh, I also agree that they didn't call the right plays for him. Uh, but. Um, there were times when the pass protection had to break. Look, the pass protection broke down because it took Justin Fields longer than anybody else. I mean, guys, in the history of football, Justin Fields was the slowest to process um, plays. I mean, you, you, there has to be some accountability for Justin Fields. We can say, yes, he had a lack of pass protection, but he didn't get rid of the ball quicker. You know what I mean? Like, he, he still didn't get rid of the ball quicker. Um, it, you know, he still took the ball down too much and continue to 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 do the wrong things you know so 
Um, Jackson, uh, Ryan Poles is still holding on to VJJ. No way he moves off of Tyler Scott. So yeah, I, I, yeah, I think so too. Like, I, I think that, uh, it would be nice to get somebody like this. I, I think Roman Wilson might be an upgrade, but I don't know. Uh, you know, I mean, still a college player. Uh, if Turner is not available, do we take verse? I think that, I think that that's the move according to Matt Eberflus. I'm not sure that Ryan Poles agrees with him. I see what they're, you know, like you see Matt Eberflus coming out here just openly saying, um, uh, you know what, um, will Caleb have more time behind the offensive line? I think by virtue of the center, yes, by virtue of Braxton Jones being a little bit better and in the lineup instead of Larry Borum, then the answer to that would be yes. If something catastrophic happens and Darnell Wright or um, um, and Braxton Jones both go down and we're down to Larry Borum and Matt Pryor, then He's going to be running for his life. But here's the other part. He processes faster and he throws faster. Justin Fields, again, I mean, it has to be noted. Justin Fields was the slowest. Uh, he, he held the ball for longer than any quarterback, basically in history. For a starting quarterback, he was the slowest to process uh, uh, defenses. So, you know, that that does matter, even though, again, I'm still a supporter of Justin Fields. But that is the truth. Like he, he should have been faster in how he was processing. And could you, uh, could it be that you know the players were not getting open quick enough and stuff like that? Well, yes, that could be part of it. But we also have to recognize that we saw the product on the field. Justin Fields was throwing to the open guy. He wasn't throwing the guy open, not enough anyway. I mean, and not that he didn't do it, but he didn't do it enough. Like he didn't have enough anticipation of route running that he was making those plays to make the job easier so he could process faster. I mean, he didn't do that. So, um, it, yes, he was running uh, based on lack of protection, but he also was making his own errors. Uh, I would like Jared Verse. Jared Verse is my favorite defensive end, by the way. So if it were up to me, I would not be looking at Dallas Turner. I'd be looking at Jared Verse. But that also gives me an opportunity to trade down a little bit, maybe pick up an extra pick or two. Uh, prefer we use nine on alt or a Dunsey if we go defensive end. I'd rather trade down and grab Latu or Chop. Really, uh, you know what? I forgot about Chop Robinson, um, uh, the Penn State guy. He's still in there as well. Um, uh, and uh, it would be nice to have another offensive. You know, it, it would be it would be nice to have another offensive pick. However, we do have to press uh, with with this. If, if we don't say defense wins championships for no reason. You know, we do have to be able to stop somebody. We do have to be able to hold somebody. Now, I want you to imagine, if you will, just 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 imagine, if you will, imagine if we had to play the Green Bay Packers in the in the playoffs every year. We get no pressure on the Packers. Our defense has not been elite enough or good enough, especially at the edges, uh, to collapse that pocket and to get to Aaron Rodgers or Jordan Love. So, are we saying that suddenly the defense? You know what I mean? Um, that, that, that suddenly the defense, uh, which playoff team did the defense stop? Uh, it stopped, uh, it stopped Detroit. Uh, it held, uh, Cleveland to 20 points. Um, and, uh, who else was in the playoffs? Uh, I mean, it's hard to, if you don't have a bunch of teams that you're, 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 you're in the playoffs playing and you played them at the beginning of the year when you're still developing and figuring your stuff out. Uh, I mean, you can, you can not like it, but that doesn't change. Again, you know, the Bears were the number one defense for the second half of the season, and it doesn't cha- that doesn't that doesn't change either. Um, and again, you held uh, Cleveland to twenty points, uh, and you were one Robert Tanyan drop away from winning that game. You you were one twenty, you know, you were one dropped pass away from being victorious in that game. Uh, you were a couple of plays away from scoring a few touchdowns uh, against the Green Bay Packers. You know, I mean, I really the problem there was Justin Fields like he and I think it was a play calling, really, because he only got to throw the ball 10 times after the first quarter. But still, you know, there's uh, it was a problem. And, uh, you know, we, we should have done more about it. But I mean, the defense only gave up 17 points. So, I mean, you can say whatever you want about it, but 17 points um, and. OK, they never punted, but they only scored 17 points. I mean, you can say whatever you want about them punting and stuff like that, but they never uh, they, they scored 17 points. It's how many points uh, it, it, it's how many points you can score, how many points you had. And you can say again, you can say that, but they only had 17 points. 
And if you can score 17 points, if you can hold a team to 17 points in the NFL, you're supposed to win those games. The end. I mean, that's that's it. Then it becomes your offense's responsibility to score more than that. Your, your offense should be scoring 20 to 25 points per game. The end. So if you're not doing that and your defense is holding people, then there you go. I mean, and, and no, I don't like the fact that, and, and what you're asking for is you're not asking for a good defense because you had a good defense. You're asking for a magical defense. And, you know, maybe having that edge rusher makes it a little bit more magical. But, you know, at this point, I mean, you still have to consider 17 points. Uh, you still gave up only 20 points to um, uh, the Cleveland Browns, which who were the number one defense, by the way, in the league by the end of the season. So, uh, you know, it's not like we didn't have uh, some opportunities. Uh, we just had a, an offense that couldn't perform, that didn't do the job. So, um, but anyway, uh, then we took Brandon Coleman uh, at number 122. Again, I would, I would have taken that Tegan guy from, from Michigan if that were the case. So anyway, uh, that is the show. We're a little bit early today because I got to get out of here. Uh, uh, so uh, thank you so much for coming in. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Um, uh, before the arrival of Sweat, uh, the Bears defense was giving up points and games. Yes, they were, and they still were after Montez Sweat. He's not enough to change the whole dynamic of that, but he did a good job of, you know, try, trying to change a little bit of it. <coughs> but you know, he can't do it alone. He ha he cannot do it al alone. So there, there's got to be somebody else. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Uh, again, I got to go, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Bear down, and we'll talk to you again 